What makes a school effective? Is it a staff of professionals who seek new creative ways of teaching? Or is it a student body working together, sharing and learning from one another? If an effective school is one that provides an opportunity to learn and laugh, to explore and question, to create and share for students and staff, then Bucknell Elementary is indeed an effective school. Located in the Alexandria area of Fairfax County, Bucknell Elementary is in its seventh year of a program called the Effective Schools Project, which was developed to improve student achievement levels. The Effective Schools Program has been actively um, involved with the staff for about the past six years. Um, the, staff have had, the staff has had a chance to um, really make a lot of decisions about what they're going to do to help improve things at Bucknell School. Each member who uh, comes to Bucknell School, works here, is involved on one of three committees. Um, so the teachers are making a lot of decisions, mm -hmm. collecting information to do the best they can to help the students achieve to the best of their ability. The overall instructional program at Bucknell centers around three areas of skill development, language arts, math, and a third component called care, citizenship, and raising expectations. Through the Effective Schools Project, the Bucknell staff is constantly developing new ways to strengthen these areas and are constantly assessing the progress. Now when we initially started to work on these three areas, um, we did a lot of, we had spent a lot of time talking about these three areas and how we are going to raise the academic achievement in math and language arts and how we are going to get the children to behave more responsibly and accept responsibility for their learning and their um, behavior. And one of the ways we did this was to start a staff development program. Through the use of Effective Schools grant money, Bucknell has developed a school-based staff development program tailored to the needs of the student body. All teachers participate in the staff development sessions and their input and support of the program keep it growing. Well, I think what's unique about our staff development is that it came from um, a request by the staff, by the teachers. The teachers wanted to have staff development that was, um, was personalized to them. So what we've done is we've divided our um, staff into three grade level teams. We have a, a K2 team, a 3-4 team, and a 5-6 team. And each team is responsible for their own staff development. They do their own planning, their own um, uh, uh, they make their own agendas, they arrange for speakers or whatever needs to be done, and they evaluate and assess their own staff development. So each staff development is very different from, the, the K2 team would be very different from the 5-6 team. They would compare the two versions, the one we read together. The staff development the, program uh, support the instructional the objectives was, of the school. The In this session, Bucknell staff members discuss of, ways um, to enhance the language arts the curriculum. Details, and they would pick one of those. My, my whole object was to get them to do a lot of reading. They would pick um, as many as they wanted to. On one of them, though, they would do this little, this little form, and they would tell the problem and how the problem was solved in the lesson. And everything they did, they would read to me. And every book they read, they would read to me when they were done with it, at least, at least part of it. So it was a chance for me to work on those strategies individually with a child. That's when I would model those, um, those strategies, how to, how to get a word you don't know. It gives us a chance to work as a team with our grade developments together. Uh, we share ideas, we talk about things that we've tried in the classrooms, things that have worked, things that haven't worked. We help each other brainstorm um, ideas that could be successful in their classroom. We talk about research, books, literature that we've read to help us implement the language arts POS. Are you doing a lot of collaborative um, yeah. reading in your yeah. classroom? It really works well. I find they stay with the book so much longer. They talk about it. They get a lot more out of it. They're, they, they, they help each other uh, read the story. So we did that, and um, I knew they wouldn't all end at the same time. So I came up with a couple little things for them to do. I, I developed some questions, some discussion questions, and they could take the basket to the pair, could discuss them. And they really did a good job. Other staff development sessions focus on improving student achievement in math. In this session, teachers learned how to use math manipulatives to teach new concepts. These are just two samples okay. from 
two new resource books here that I purchased for the school. Okay, since we are concentrating on uh, problem solving this year. Okay, this one is story problems with pattern blocks. Mm. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to look at your blue sheet. This is just a sample of one of the activities. It has some wonderful activities, covers grades one through three in here. Um, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you take and try to solve one of this. This might be okay. probably very end of first grade, maybe second grade level. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Through staff development, the teachers have been able to share a lot of the ideas in math. Uh, the teachers will find what, use things in their classrooms, find what works, and then in staff development can share it with the other teachers. During staff development sessions, teachers experiment and evaluate to come up with the best activities to take back to the classroom. I didn't have a good strategy. You, you came out with a strategy, <laughs> and I didn't. And, I, and so it was, it was harder for me because you had a strategy covering them up and then only revealing. I had to keep undoing them. And, um, in a, and so now I realize I should have thought first of a strategy to try to do that. Well, I tried to do it first. And then I, I Bucknell teachers I are enthusiastic about the staff development programs and feel that the effects are being seen in the classroom. I think what's very special about it and what's extraordinary is that we have not only seen change among the teachers that have been involved, but we have already seen change among the students. That um, Teachers go out and they directly use what they have learned in staff development. We see a, a, a complete tur a, a turnover immediately and we see different things happening in the classroom. Out loud, and now we're going to explore a new pattern today, and the pattern's going to be the fives. So in this class, it's now the students who are experimenting with math manipulatives, as their teacher uses these tools to teach a new concept. Next, I'm going to put out one group. Would you put out one group? I have one group of what? One group of five. Who can tell me the multiplication problem that goes with that? George. We use math manipulatives to teach all new concepts in math. These very visual One, so and colorful objects help to make five, abstract five, concepts very concrete for the, the students. Uh, by physically One, manipulating the five, objects, they're more directly involved in learning. The visual representation of concepts helps students understand patterns and relationships in mathematics. What other pattern had straight lines like this? What other number pattern had straight lines? Tens Boosting like student this. achievement in math is one of the focuses uh, of the Effective Schools four, so Project. Sure that. By using Two instructional tools that help lines. students learn Other's and understand, and by taking part in staff development activities on Look the most chart. effective ways Spider to use number. these tools, choose? Bucknell teachers are Five helping their there. students like succeed. Wait. Megan is counting. How many? Yeah. Count again. How many rows? Five. Five. For the fives, we only have how many rows? Two. Micah? Two. Two. Okay. Who can lead the counting? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So what's three times five, everyone? Another focus of the Effective Schools Project is in the area of language arts. Students at Bucknell work on their reading and writing skills throughout the day in many areas of the curriculum. In social studies, we do letter writing to various counties to get information about that area. We also do biographical sketches of the famous people in Virginia. In health, we do a lot of contrasting and comparing of various restaurants when we are working on a nutrition unit. In science, we write poems and stories about butterflies. And also with, in science, in the colored solution science kit that we have, we do a lot of experiments in writing up those experiments. We do a lot of writing here at Bucknell and in every subject area. Scientists come up with a problem, 
They make a guess about how that problem is going to be solved. They find out how they're going to prove that that problem. These third right graders are using language arts in their science class by keeping do. learning logs and writing about their experiments. The students enjoy sharing reports of their experiments and gain valuable skills in organizing their thoughts. And what materials you use to solve that problem and what you learn. Because remember, the purpose of doing this is to report what we've learned because we want to share with other people what we've learned in writing. Not just telling people what we've learned, but in writing. We also, in third grade, we've done, we're doing a unit on sink or float. And in this unit, we talk about uh, the density of the water and how that affects floating and sinking objects. We also will talk about the material of the objects and how that affects the sinking or floating. And we, again, use the learning logs, and we record our observations. We've also made books, and instead of writing poetry, we write, we've written um, what we've learned about the sinking or floating objects. And we've also extended that activity by uh, um, doing experiments relating to sinking or floating and we're now going to be recording that information and making a magazine to be uh, shared with the rest of the community or the, the school community so that students have a way of after they've experimented to write what they've learned and then share that information with uh, other members of their class or other members of their their school we're just writing a draft these are the steps we have the four steps remember pre-writing drafting. When we finish the draft, then we'll do our revising. And remember this morning I also said that if you have a question while you're writing, you can talk to the people in your group. You have a question, Walter? Um, in the course of the science lesson, students reviewed notes in their learning logs, wrote first drafts of their reports, and worked together discussing the best way to phrase their findings. How can I describe the paper in the plastic? How can you describe the paper in the plastic? To make paper paper. Okay, great. We got a problem over here. She doesn't know how to describe the paper in the plastic. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, well, the plastic is made of. Bucknell students are learning about some very interesting topics in science, and their lessons are becoming more meaningful through language arts activities. The note-taking, group and one-on-one -on -one discussion, and report writing help students organize their thoughts and share information about science while building skills in language arts. It's just a good way for children to think about what they're doing and uh, become more clear and concise in, in their thoughts and, and their writing so that they can tell people what they're learning. Mostly that's how we do science and writing. Language arts skills are also being emphasized in a reading program that brings younger and older students together. Once a week, the reading buddies from sixth grade have a chance to work with their younger first and second grade buddies, reading books, discussing the stories, and sharing a very special time together. For the past three or four years at Bucknell, we've instituted a reading buddy program where first and second graders read with sixth graders. This year, my sixth grade class works with both a first grade class and a second grade class approximately once a week. We usually meet on Friday mornings for about half an hour. During that time, my students read to the first graders and in turn the first graders read to my sixth graders. I feel it's been a very positive program overall. Down the street with Joanne. The sixth grade students enjoy working with the first and second graders, and teachers have found that this type of activity can boost the confidence of the older students who serve as role models. In addition, the activity also makes younger students feel good about sharing stories with their buddies. It gives them a purpose for reading. It gives them a chance to share with other people other than the children in their classroom. They're assigned to a sixth grade buddy and they enjoy bringing in things from home that they've practiced reading. They practice reading things in the classroom. They uh, bring in topics that they're interested in. They choose books that they're interested in and they share them with their buddies. Oops, said the donkey. It's going walking. A bear, a cow, a 
pig, a duck, a donkey, a monkey, all in a box. The Reading Buddies program helps students gain valuable skills not only in reading, but also in communicating. Students feel very comfortable sharing with their buddies and enjoy their time together each week. The children were encouraged to select their own reading buddies. Many of them chose friends, others chose brothers and sisters and cousins. And one child chose her brother because he makes her laugh and because he reads to her at home. And this is the whole gist of the whole program, is for students to have an opportunity to share books with their friends. Positive role models, like the sixth grade reading buddies, encourage other students to do their best and succeed in school. In another program at Bucknell, parents and members of the community also offer support and encouragement by becoming involved in the school's career awareness program. Well, for the whole month of November, we've been doing several activities. Uh, the kids have had a chance to develop stories. They've had a chance to draw pictures. We're having parents, uh, friends, and relatives come in and talk about their careers. We've had uh, numerous films and film strips. Uh, the kids have had a chance to decorate uh, bulletin boards, and some of the teachers have uh, put displays in some of the showcases. Bucknell parents are supportive of the program, which began last year, and many volunteer to come in and talk about their jobs. Hi, I'm Mrs. Lino, and uh, my career for the past 24 years has been a secretary. I work, like for Mr. Jackson, I would be his secretary, okay? Um, the students were very interested in hearing about this parent's job, and her son was proud that his mom could share a little of her life with his classmates. My first job, um, basically, was working for the chief photographer for National Park Service. And I got to see all the parks in the United States through pictures. And I decided then that someday I'd like to go out west and live and work in a national park, which I did before Jeremy was born. He was born <laughs> in California when we lived in a national park called Lassen Volcanic National Park. And this is in some classes, here, each student is asked to invite a guest speaker during career month. This gives students the chance to hear about many different jobs and career choices. This speaker told students about his job as an agent for the Drug Enforcement Administration. I'm Carl Jackson. Uh, my title is Deputy Assistant Administrator for Plan Inspection Division with the Drug Enforcement Administration. What that means is I'm a special agent. Uh, with the Drug Enforcement Administration. My job now as Deputy In addition to telling students about his job, this speaker also took the opportunity to warn students about the dangers of drug abuse. Drugs are used for a number of reasons uh, socially. A lot of it is peer pressure. Some of it is to, uh, to keep up what other people are doing. Uh, some people think it's cool think it's uh, the thing to do. Uh, career Awareness Month it, helped it students helps at Bucknell uh, learn about possible career choices and gave parents and community members the chance to get involved in school activities. This kind of support is very important at Bucknell and thanks to the parents the students have seen a lot of benefits, among them a new playground. Due to the very supportive and dedicated nature of the parental community here at Bucknell the children are very fortunate to have a brand new metal playground, which will last for many years. The parents raised thousands of dollars through fundraisers, and additionally were able to get a grant from the Fairfax County Park Authority. When selecting the playground equipment, Bucknell staff and parents were careful to choose pieces that would not only be fun for the children, but would also contribute to their physical development. These pieces were chosen because they each made a contribution or a different contribution to motor development of the children. They looked around several of the companies and couldn't find any one company
whose equipment would make a contribution to motor development on a varied basis, such as the ones they've chosen. So they actually chose several different companies from which to buy the pieces and made their own very special playground for the children to use. The equipment each makes a contribution in different ways, such as coordination, balance, and imagination also was a consideration the parents felt was very important. I think they did a great job in choosing it. And they're all brightly colored and very small or low down so that the children are all able to use the equipment, the small children as well. During their physical education classes, students learn about the equipment and how to use it to increase their level of fitness. Does anybody know why we're doing this obstacle course? Because we want to get a lot of Brittany? Energy. energy. And you know what comes, how we make energy with our body? Running. Running. Running, right. We're going to try to get everything moving and our heart beating. The kids have really had a good time on the obstacle course. The main objective, however, was to have fun, but as well uh, for the children to learn to use the equipment properly, a safe way to come down and get on the equipment. Additionally, my objective from a physical education standpoint was to develop or to build their cardiorespiratory endurance by sustaining activity for a set amount of time. The kids have actually been able to uh, increase their res cardiorespiratory development over a period of time and they've been able to do it for a longer time. They've really enjoyed it. What we do is we actually take their pulse before the activity and as well as after the activity and the kids can see the effect of uh, exercise on their heart rate. They really have enjoyed it very much and under seem to understand it very well. The students are very familiar with the course but as they climb and slide, they seem to have as much fun as their first time on the playground. Thanks to the efforts of the Bucknell community, students have the opportunity to increase their fitness and at the same time, do some of the things that they enjoy most. From balance beam to castle. Next, what is that? Bucknell Elementary is a unique school built on encouragement, opportunity, and cooperation. Students and staff work together as a community of learners, and both groups are actively involved in making the school the special place that it is. Bucknell is special to me because the teachers are the best and they always can find some time to help you and they always care about you and, and they find some time to really make you feel special. Care is more than just a word at Bucknell. It not only reflects the relationship between the teachers and students, but it is also the third component of the Effective Schools Project. Care stands for citizenship and raising expectations, and by promoting citizenship and achievement, this component encourages students to take a more active role in their education. My vision for the um, students and staff is that the students and staff work together as a community of learners where the students are truly in a child-centered school where they're actively involved from the moment they enter in the morning to they leave in the afternoon. They're working with morning announcements, closing announcements, helping set up for our special assemblies, our word assemblies, helping out in the school store, helping make decisions that help them feel a part of the school. The care component is important to Bucknell students who strive to do their best. You have to have good grades and you have to be you have to have good citizenship and have to be a good student. And good students receive recognition for their contributions to many of the school's programs. The end of the first quarter, students receive four awards for, the, for their good citizenship, honors, high honors, music, PE, and, and patrol. Students also receive recognition in a school newsletter called Bucknell's Best. 
it has the student in the spotlight and the school news. And um, the student spotlight, the teacher picks a student from the classroom that has um, done a good job that week. And they write about their hobbies and they put it in the Bucknell's Best. And the school news is the important activities that has gone on for that week or the following week. And um, it lets parents know the important facts of what's going on in school. Keeping the lines of communication open between home and school is important, and Bucknell does this through the newsletter and other projects, such as the homework notebook. We had uh, developed a homework notebook where parents were communicating directly with the, the teacher and the child through the use of a homework. The child would write the homework down, teachers could write comments in the homework notebook, the parents could write comments back to the teacher. It was a real good communication system that we had. The relationship between students, parents, and staff is a key element at Bucknell Elementary. The open lines of communication, the involvement by parents, and the school environment filled with encouragement all promote student success. And with the focus on language arts, math, and citizenship, along with other programs at the school, Bucknell Elementary proves what can happen when all of the components come together and work effectively.